What's up, baby Bob Penguins? Today we are 2023 number six on Boston Whisker Analysis. Housekeeping genes encode proteins involved in universal important processes such as transcription, translation, and glycolysis. Because these genes appear to be expressed in all cells at constant levels, the expression of housekeeping genes is often used as a control when comparing how the expression of other genes varies under different conditions. Researchers are studying the effect of pesticides on declining bee populations who wanted to determine whether the expression of four housekeeping genes was in fact constant in bees across different variables. The researchers collected samples of mRNA from each of the four genes and compared how their expression varied across development mental stage of the bee, the sex of the bee, and the cell type from which the sample was taken. The mRNA from the samples was reverse transcribed to produce DNA copies of each gene. PCR was then used to amplify the DNA, and the CQ value was determined. The CQ value is the number of PCR cycles needed to produce a specific number of DNA copies. A high CQ value for a sample indicates the gene was expressed at a low level. To analyze whether any of the expressed variables affected expression of the housekeeping genes, researchers examined the range of CQ values for each gene in response to each variable. Genes with a wide range were determined to be uh, affected by the variable, while genes with a narrow range were determined to be unaffected by the variable. So now, you may not have seen a box and whisker before, so let's just do a quick little thing on this, okay? So if we look at our little box and whisker, the line that you see in the middle is considered your median versus the 50% of the data is going to be above that median and then 50% of the data will be below the median, okay? Um, so here's 25% of your data, here's the next 25%, here's the next 25%, and then here's your last 25% of your data. So part A asks us, based on the data in figure one, identify the gene that had the lowest median CQ value when the Bs of different developmental stages were compared. And so this is asking us to look at the median and then also wants us to look here at the developmental stages. So as we already said, the line in the middle shows our median. So if we look here, which one of these has the um, lowest median value? Well, that would, of course, be the gray one, which is the RPS5, okay? So students said the RPS5 gene had the lowest CQ value for all the four genes when developmental stages were compared. Part B says the CQ value is inversely proportional to the amount of mRNA from which that gene is the starting sample. Based on the data in the figure, identify the gene that has the lowest level of gene expression regardless of the variable. Now, so what this is asking us to do is to find the value that has the highest one, because this is saying that they're inversely proportional. So if we're asking for a low level, that means that we need a high CQ value. And so the one that has the high CQ value, of course, is right here. So if we look at that, that's TBPAF in our cell types. So TBPAF. Regardless of the variable, the TBPAF gene had the highest CQ value and therefore the lowest level of gene expression. Now notice that it does say identify as well as part A also said identify. You could write the one word answer, um, but just to be safe, I always tell my students to write a full sentence. And as you see, this student did write the full sentences. Part C, the scientists investigate the effect of pesticide on the expression of other genes in one cell type of the group of bees containing males and females of the same developmental stage. They hypothesized that the TBPAF was to serve as the best controlled gene for this experiment. Use the data to evaluate their hypothesis. Okay, so we're looking at the sex, of course, and then they're wanting us to use the TPBAF. So if we look at this. Okay, what we can see is that the actual range of its data, right? So from the smallest number to its largest number, it's going to have the long, like the shortest distance. And that shows us that it is the best control because they said that if there's less variability in it, that that was going to be favorable. Okay. And so in case you didn't realize that those were the same, I made a little line on there and I'm using that same line on all of them to show that they are the same length or that they're, the other ones are actually longer. Um, and so you can kind of see, if you look closely, and I know it's kind of a small image, that there's like a little bit of space at the bottom of each of these. So they're showing you that those ranges are not as long as the range that we had for TBBAF. So their hypothesis is supported because TPBAF has the smallest CQ range and the most constant expression when comparing those sexes. Students said the hypothesis is accurate because the TBPAF gene has the smallest range of CQ values during the developmental stage, meaning that it is the least affected by the variable. And then part D, explain how the expression of a gene such as GAPDH can vary from one cell type to another within the same B. And so this all has to do with transcription factors and other um, components that are part of that expression. So different cell types have different levels or different transcription factors and therefore will regulate that expression in a different way. So the students said expression of a gene like GAPDF can vary from one cell type to another due to transcription factors. Cells that have the 
Uh, correct transcription factors will translate and express the GAPDH gene. Hope that was helpful. Remember, a penguin was just assessed by 